Let's talk about the truth when living at home in college or university. It is a lot of things to say the least. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rochelle. I just finished my sophomore year of university and these past two years of school, I've been living at home. So I live at home with my parents during university just because I don't live too far from my school. I live a commutable distance. I commute about like an hour one way. So it's not too, too bad. But living at home these past two years, I picked up on some of the good and the bad about what it's like to live at home. And I thought I would just share it with you guys. If you're deciding whether or not you should be living at home during university or college, hopefully this video will be helpful for you in making that decision. I have made a full list of things I want to talk about in this video on my phone, just because I think this is an important video for those of you making that decision on whether or not you should live at home during college or university. So I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to make this intro too long, but before we get started in this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's just get into this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is meals. We as human beings need to eat and feed ourselves. I know this may not apply to everybody, but I feel like it applies to a lot of people. It definitely applies to me too, but when you live at home, you get home cooked meals. For me, because I live at home, my mom still cooks for me. So I get home cooked meals every day. And I feel like having home cooked meals every day, it helps me to stay healthy. And I guess my food intake or diet isn't really changing much. By that, I mean, I'm consistently eating healthy, good meals that I know have the right and proper nutrition every day. When you live on your own, you have to cook for yourself. I feel like sometimes you could be really busy in those scenarios where you're just super busy and you don't have time to cook. You might go for something instant or you might decide to go eat out. Eating out or going for instant food is not always the best for you. It's not always healthy, especially if you're like living in dorms. Personally, I feel like if you're getting food from like the food central area every day, a lot of that is just fast food. So you might not be getting proper nutrition. So I would say that's just not good for you. Hence the reason why they call it freshman 15 because you just tend to gain weight. In that sense, I know that a lot of people do do that because they have to. So through this video, I hope I'm not judging anyone, but that's just my general opinion on having a meal plan. Also, a good thing about living at home and your parents cooking for you is that A, you don't have to cook, but B, cooking is pretty time consuming. So if you don't have to cook yourself, that gives you more time to do whatever you want, whether it be more time to finish your schoolwork or having more free time to hang out with friends or even taking more shifts at work or something. The second thing I wanted to talk about is commuting because that is a huge part about living at home. You have to commute to school. With commuting, because you don't live on campus or near campus, you do have to wake up earlier just to get to school because the commute can be pretty long whether you're taking public transit or driving. Personally, I'm not a morning person, so that's what I hate the most is waking up early. But you know, because it's a necessity, I kind of force myself to do it. I'm a grumpy person in the morning just because I'm tired. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. For me, I take public transit to get to school. I take the bus, but unfortunately, sometimes the bus may not come often or when the bus does come often, like every 15 minutes, they only come at certain times. So when commuting to school, you do have to plan out your times on which bus you wanna take. And sometimes the bus arrival times do not line up with what you plan for your schedule. So sometimes you might arrive super early, but that's just something you have to go with. I mean, there's not much you can do. Also, this really gets on my nerves. Sometimes the bus doesn't show up when it's supposed to show up. For example, there's supposed to be a bus at like, let's say, 2.45 p.m. Because it's public transit, sometimes the bus doesn't show up. It's not late, it's not early. I don't know why, it just doesn't come at all. And this has happened to me like a few times already, which has actually made me late for class. But going back to that example, buses were scheduled every 30 minutes and the bus that was supposed to stop at my stop at 2.45 never showed up. So I had to wait till 3.15 to get on the bus, which would have made me late for class. Also, I guess this only applies to you if you don't have your own car. Like for me, I don't own my own car. So living at home, I get car privileges. Of course, being at home, I get access to the car. So when I need to drive somewhere, I can just go take one of my parents' cars and just, you know, drive. 
being able to take the car to get to my destination is definitely less annoying and it gets me to my destination a lot faster than taking public transit. Also, if you have your own car or you're able to take the car to drive yourself to school, I find that parking at your university or college is usually really expensive or overpriced. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, but I guess they just wanna make students even more poor than they already are. So they make parking pretty pricey and a lot of schools tend to do that, sadly. Personally, I just feel like it's not worth it. Like I'd rather commute just to save a little bit of money. Another downside about living at home is that hanging out with your school friends can be quite difficult. Just because depending on where you live, you might not live close to your friends. So that might make scheduling time to spend together difficult just because you have to take into consideration commute times especially if you want to hang out at a place that may be closer to one of your friends but a lot further for another friend and in my personal opinion if the destination is like really far from where i live and the commute is just not a fun commute or not a bearable commute sometimes i would say the commute is not worth it and i would end up not going to the hangout and that definitely is sad because you know you want to hang out with your friends but at the same time the commute is just not a great time. So yeah, because you don't live nearby your friends, that's what makes it difficult to schedule hangouts. The next fact I have for you about living at home will honestly make you so happy because when you live at home, you save a lot of money. Paying to commute to school every day is less expensive than paying for rent. In today's world, rent is pretty expensive and paying for rent along with tuition is a lot of money. So if it is possible for you to live at home during college or university, I would suggest that if you are tight on money or if you just want to save. This kind of ties in with meals, but living at home, you also save money because you eat out less. Personally, I find that when you live at home, you're more willing to pack your own lunch and bring it to school instead of having to buy lunch every day. So that can be an area where you could save a little bit of moolah. Now let's talk about time management. I find that when you live at home, you do really need to have good time management skills, especially when it comes to commuting. Commuting does eat up a lot of time. So because the commute time may be long, this makes you have less time to do whatever you want. The fact that commuting does eat up a lot of time, you have to manage your time wisely between schoolwork, maybe a job, hanging out with friends, your hobbies, your extracurriculars, whatever you do in your life. You have to be able to manage your time wisely to be able to do all the things you want to do. And of course, to get enough sleep because that is so important for students. I started to do schoolwork on the bus ride. I usually don't finish like a whole assignment or anything on the bus. I just use my time on the bus to get a little bit of work done. I feel like doing schoolwork on the bus takes that good free time where you're just sitting there doing nothing and makes it useful. Now let's talk about my school schedule. So because I live at home, I have to commute every day, but I don't enjoy commuting and it's just kind of painful in my opinion. And I don't want to go to school every day of the week. So when I plan my classes, I try to stack as many classes as I can on the same day. And I also try to plan my class start times as close together as possible. This benefits your time management because when you plan your classes as close together as possible, or when you stack them on the same day, you get more free time. It could also save you money too, because if you stack your classes on certain days, there may be days other than the weekend where you don't have to go to school. So that saves you money because you don't have to pay for your commute fee. This method is how I plan my classes for first and second year. And honestly, I highly recommend planning your classes like this because this way I get days off and I also get shorter school days, which gives me a lot more free time to use however I want, which is honestly blessed. On to curfews. So living with your parents, they might make you be home by a certain time. Unfortunately, this might shorten your hangout times with your friends. But for those of you who aren't given a curfew by your parents, you have to take into consideration commute times because public transit does stop at a certain time. For example, I know my bus that I usually take to get home stops at 1 a.m. And if you decide to hang out later than that, or if you miss that last bus, then you have no way of getting home and you might be homeless for the night. So yeah, if you live at home and you wanna stay out late, just keep in mind that you will have a curfew, whether it is enforced by your parents or public transportation. A curfew set by public transportation. Wow, that actually sounds so weird. Living at home also means living under your parents' roof. And living under your parents' roof means you may need permission to do things. 
I know this may not apply to everybody, but it does apply to me, so I thought I would share it with you anyways. But sometimes when I want to hang out with friends or if I want to go somewhere or borrow the car or something, I do need permission to do all of these things. So I don't get the free will to do whatever I want. I do have to ask my parents for the permission to do things. This also means you don't fully get to make your own decisions because you have to take in their consideration, which sucks because, you know, hitting university or college, that's like the point where you're just like, you know, I got to live life and make my own decisions but because I live at home, I don't fully get to do that. I'll admit, I do get to make a lot of decisions on my own, but there's still quite a bit of times where I don't get to do that. Also, living under your parents' roof, there might be at-home responsibilities that might be expected of you to do, but those may differ for everybody, depending on your family lifestyle. I also find that when you live at home, it kind of compromises your social life. I feel like a large chunk of university college is to meet new people. And I've said this earlier, but when you live at home, it makes scheduling hangout times with your friends more difficult if you don't live close to each other. And if you are able to have hangouts with your friends, they might be shortened because of commuting and curfews. Also, I find that when you live at home, it limits your ability to meet new people especially in your first year of university because I feel like a lot of people live in dorms and because you live at home instead of dorms, therefore you aren't able to meet a lot of people. I've just had a lot of friends who do live in dorms and what they've told me is that they do become friends with people on their floor. Living at home, the only place for you to meet new people is in your classes or maybe if you want to join clubs, you can meet new people there. But other than that, you don't get to become friends with people who live on the same floor or in the same building as you. Honestly, I think living on campus your first year is a crucial part of the university college experience. Something that I unfortunately missed out on. When living at home, I also find that your independence is compromised. Sure, you could be independent when you live at home. However, you don't get the experience of moving out and living on your own, which is a huge part of growing up. Which leads to my next point. When you live at home, you tend to grow up slower because you can still rely on your parents to help you out with some of the stuff. Whereas when you move out and you live out on your own, you're forced to do everything yourself, which helps you to grow up. I made a list of things you might not have to worry about when you live at home. The stuff on this list is kind of general, so it may or may not apply to you, but I'm just gonna tell you anyways. When you live at home, you don't have to worry about groceries, cleaning, taking up the trash, maintenance, or landlord relationships. My last point about living at home during university or college basically just summarizes everything I've said up to this point, and that is when you live at home, you don't get the full college university experience. I've already said this before, but a huge part of university college, in my opinion, is to live on campus at least for one year. Piggybacking on top of that, you don't get to experience living with roommates or friends. Well, I guess when you live at home, your roommates are your parents and siblings if you have siblings. When you live at home, you don't get to create those roommate or housemate relationships, which is unfortunate in my opinion because you know you just don't get to experience that and you don't know what it's like. Because I've never experienced that, I can't really touch on how to explain that. Like that's something I want to experience, having a roommate and having housemates. So that's what really sucks about living at home. I really do miss out on a lot of these opportunities and these opportunities help you to grow up and it helps prepare you for the real world after university. I mean, when you live at home, you will eventually become prepared for the real world, but you won't reach there as quickly as others who have already experienced moving out and living out on their own. So yeah, everybody will become prepared for that point in their life. It's just how quickly you will get there. All right guys, this brings me to the end of this video. I think I've pretty much covered everything about living at home, the good and the bad. Personally, I am probably gonna be living at home for the rest of my time in university. Do I recommend it? Sure, but that is also up to you and your opinion after hearing all of these facts about living at home. I will say that personally, I don't mind living at home because there are benefits to living at home. For those of you who are debating on whether or not you should live at home during university or college, I hope you found this video useful in helping you make that decision. Other than that, if you like this video, be sure to give my video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.